I'm going to demonstrate how to recode in SPSS, and we're going to recode into a different variable in this video. So I'm going to show the menu point and click, and then I will explain the syntax and um, some quick tips for that. So first of all, we're in a data set where we have five measurements. Um, we have two variables for demographics. We have gender and age. And then we have these three questions measuring self-esteem. And our self-esteem questions, you can see that they should be ordered from one to five for disagree to agree. Now let's say something weird happened with data entry. And if we click over into our self-esteem, because you should always visualize your data, you can see that something's wrong here. These should be one through five. Turns out that they were entered as six through 10. So a six should actually be a one, seven should be a two, et cetera. So recoding into a different variable is a quick way to take care of this. Uh, I typically don't use recode into same variable because you'll overwrite your data. And then if you make a mistake, you're kind of out of luck um, and you have to start over with your data. Um, but everybody has their own process for doing this. So I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to go into recode into different variables. And you can see that the variable label is showing. So I could right click and display my variable names. And here you can see that I have self-esteem one, self-esteem two, self-esteem three. I can deal with them all at the same time, but I'm just going to show one at a time first. So here I can put self-esteem one and just clicked my arrow over and then I need to add a name. So this is my old variable and it's a numeric variable and I'm going to create a new variable that's going to take on the value that's correct. So here you want to give it something that makes sense that is easy to identify. I'm going to put SE1 underscore fixed. Uh, I could add a label here. So if I wanted to, I could add, add a label and say, um, this is the uh, fixed self-esteem one. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if this were real data set, then I might do something a little bit more detailed, but you can include that there if you'd like to. And then you need to click change. And what happens is that the new variable name moves over here. So now you have SE1, we're gonna take those values, we're gonna transform them and put them into this SE1 fixed. So we're creating a new variable. Now, when I click old and new values, you can see that I need to put in an old value on this side. And then on this side, I need to put in my new value. So what should it be in my new value? So in my old value, I have six through 10. So I need to put in six, and that is going to become a one in my new variable. And you'll notice that the add button becomes available and I'm going to click it. And now it's here, it's in this old to new uh, little window. I need to do that for the rest of them. So seven is going to become two, and eight is going to become three, nine is going to become four, and 10 is going to become five. And so once they're all added here, you always want to just take a look, make sure that it looks the way you want it to. Um, I do not want them to be string variables, so I don't need to check anything here. And then I'm going to continue. There are other options here. So you can use system missing options. Um, you can actually just copy old values. You can go uh, between a range of values. Um, but for this, we're just going to do a straightforward switch. So I'm going to say continue. Now I have this all set up and ready to go, and I'm just going to press OK. Here is the syntax. I'll talk about that uh, in just a moment here. So now you can see that I have my SE1 fixed. The reason why it's beneficial to have this variable that's new instead of just recoding into the same variable here is because, again, I, I want to make sure I did it correctly. So data cleaning and management is all about accuracy. Um, and so you want to make sure that you are transforming that data correctly. And here I can eyeball this and just say, hey, this is correct. I did this correctly. 
Um, you could then delete that variable if you wanted to. You could um, create a new data set that has just your cleaned variables, whatever you feel is appropriate that fits with your methodology. Um, but this, I now have my new variable. Now I'm gonna go back and show you how to do them all at the same time. Uh, this only works when you have the exact same values that you want to change for all of them. So here I want my SE2 to become my SE2 fixed. I'm not gonna bother with the label this time. I'm gonna press change. I also want my SE3 to undergo the same transformation. So because all of them, when I go to old and new values, are gonna go through this same number changing process, that's the only time that you should do this, I can press continue and okay. And it's going to show that here. So now I have my three fixed variables. So that's how you recode into a different variable. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the syntax. So if you don't care about syntax, you can say goodbye. Um, so syntax again is just programming language in SPSS. Uh, it's very useful for cleaning data when you might have to go back and change things or maybe you get new data and so you wanna make the same transformations, um, but it's a, a great practice to get in the habit of. So. Um, here you can see uh, that we did a couple different things. So the first one, we recoded self-esteem one, and we made a six into a one, a seven into a two, eight into a three, nine into a four, 10 into a five. And we put that into our new variable. So I'm actually going to copy this. And I'm just going to say new syntax and right click and paste. So you can, we can separate this out. So recode here, this is our um, command right here that we're creating. So we're starting off with saying what we'd like to do, we're gonna recode. The key here for recoding into a different variable is the into and then the new variable name. So if you leave that off, you're gonna recode the variable into the same variable and you're gonna overwrite the existing data, which might be fine depending on what you're doing. Um, so here is just this single one. Um, and then I added that variable label here, right? This is the second time that I did it. You'll notice that I have the variables in order from one to three. I have the same information in the middle showing how I'm going to recode it. And then after into, I have my one, two, three in the same order that I want to transform the variables, the original variables into over here. So you can um, make this a faster process rather than doing this for each variable individually. So that's the end of this video. There is a separate video on transforming into the same variable.